Hey everyone, I'm Joel Green and welcome to Curiosity Quest, the show that explores what you, the viewer, are curious about. Now today our quest letter came to us from Fountain Valley, California. Henry wrote, Dear Joel, can you do a show that shows me how they make rice? Well Henry, because of you, we've traveled up here to Richvale, California, home of Lungbird Family Farms. We're going to learn how they make rice. So let's begin today's Curiosity Quest. Come on. We're inside Lumberg Family Farms, and I'm here with Jessica Lumberg. Tell me a little bit about the family farm. Well, our family farm has been here in California since 1937. Uh, since we came, we've been farming rice. So it was something that uh, when my grandparents came, it was very different for them. They actually came from the Midwest where they grew corn and cattle. So coming to California and growing rice was quite the adventure. It, it's really different than growing crops in, in the Midwest because rice grows in water. So to learn how to do things in water is, is very different and uh, it took a lot of creativity and a lot of uh, work and uh, help from their neighbors and they learned a lot. But now we, uh, we still grow rice, uh, we are, have a family farm and then we built a business around growing rice. So we uh, make rice products and we sell them around the United States. Well, Henry is the reason why we're out here. You want to know where, where rice comes from, so I'm going to start there. Where does it come from? Rice, that, wow, what a huge question. Where does rice come from, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, rice originally came from Asia. Okay. So as far as a crop, uh, it originated in Asia, uh, in uh, southern China. So when you say, where did it come from? Well, all of the seed that we grow, because rice is a plant, you have to have a seed to make a plant. Mm -hmm. All of that seed, hundreds and actually thousands of years ago, came from southern China. Now, where does rice come that we grow? Uh, we uh, grow our own seed, uh, and then the seed uh, comes from uh, scientists that collect seed from all over the world and bring it in, and then we can try and grow the seeds and see what, what survives and what does the best here. Okay. Uh, and then as farmers, we plant seeds every year uh, because rice grows as an annual crop. Mm -hmm. It has to be planted every year, and uh, we let the plants grow. Uh, we feed it, we water it, and then we harvest it. So when we harvest, we're harvesting the seeds off of the plants and we can bring it into our facility, dry it so that we can keep it safely in storage until we're ready to mill it and eat it. And we're gonna be able to see that process too. Oh yeah, you'll get to see the whole thing. Well, let's go check it out. All right, sounds good. Cool. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Hey, check this out. Rice is grown on every continent except Antarctica. Ridiculous question, but where is the rice? The rice is all around us. So the rice in this field are these green plants and uh, the part that we eat is the seed and it's here at the top of these stems. So what the harvesters are doing is they're cutting the plants oh. off and inside the machine they're separating the leaves and the stems from the rice kernels. So th right here these are the rice kernels. They don't really look like rice kernels that I'm well, that's because it still has the hull on the outside of it. In fact, some of these even still have part of the stem on it. But those will get separated in the machine, and then this is what gets taken into the dryer, dried down, and the hull protects the kernel until we're ready to mill it or take the outer hull off of the kernel so that we can eat it. So this looks higher than this right here. Are all of the kernels, as you call them, are they already taken off over here? Yeah, this part's already been harvested. In fact, you can see those tire tracks from the equipment that's had to run through it. We got some rain and it's, it's pretty squishy soft, but this has been harvested, this has not been harvested. Okay, and I, I hear the machine you know, behind me right here. Is that what it's doing right now? It's harvesting, yep. So it's cutting the plants off, like I said, about eight inches above the ground, bringing all this material inside the machine separating out the stems and the straw, keeping the kernels in the machine, okay. throwing the straw out the back, back into the field where we can work the straw into the soil, and then this is what's gonna be unloaded from the harvester into the bank out, taken to the trailers, and driven into the dryer facility. Okay, wow. Okay, so uh, I've got lots of questions going through my mind. First of all, why is everything so wet? I know you said rain, but rain. aren't rice fields normally flooded? 
They are. We grow the rice in water throughout the season. Rice is the only a, a semi-aquatic plant uh, that is a grain crop in the world. But this time of year, we have the fields drained and they're dry so that we can get in and harvest with our equipment. But the reason why there's still water in the field, like I said, is rain. But it's because this, this soil that we're growing in is heavy clay. And that heavy clay doesn't drain very well. Uh, so when it rains, even though the field was dry just a few days ago, now we've got standing water because the soil's not going to drain very quickly with that clay. Is that why you had us put on these waders right here? Yep. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> and I'm, I feel like I am getting stuck in the uh, uh, Yep, you will. In the mud fact, here. There's a few spots that you may sink down four to six inches, so I may have to pull you out. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to walk in it and kind of feel how tall. Is this how tall rice? No, that's a weed. Oh, that's a <laughs> <laughs> okay, forget that one. We go over here. How about right here? Is this how tall you'll That's let it get? That's how tall rice will get. Okay. Yeah. Now remember, there's so many different varieties of rice. So this variety is just about three feet tall, but some of it can get a little bit taller. Some of it is going to be a little bit shorter. Depends on the variety, but that's just about how tall our varieties in California get. The industry is about 600,000 acres, so it's quite a bit of area that's grown to rice. How does it know what's grain and what's hay? Uh, well, we have aspirators inside the machine. What those are is, is uh, very powerful fans. Yeah. And the grain is heavier than the straw. So when those fans blow over all the materials, some of it, uh, actually some of it, the grain has to fall first through a sieve or screens, and it falls through the screens, and then any straw that makes it through is blown off. And what's this thing doing? This is the bank out. This is taking the grain from the harvester out to the edge of the field because the truck couldn't drive in here, but these bank outs with these big tires can drive in here, get the rice from the harvester so they don't have to stop cutting. They can keep cutting. So you'll see this right oh, now? Oh, wow, I was wondering, like, how's it gonna get it from? Yep, there? that's how it's gonna get it. So the harvester keeps cutting, and the bank out will then take the rice from the harvester to the edge of the field where the truck can pick it up in the trailers. So it just turns it, oh, there we go. And there it goes. When does uh, rice get planted? How long does it take to grow? And when do you harvest? What's that timeline? Oh, that's a good question. So again, it depends on the variety, but in general, it takes about four months. So we plant in the spring, we harvest in the fall. We get only one crop a year here in California. Wow. And uh, it can take four months, it can take five months. It depends on the variety. So when you plant in the spring, do you immediately flood the field when you plant? We do. And uh, you know, for us, we do have a couple unique varieties. Uh, our, our red rice and our black rice, we plant on dry fields and then flood. But all of our other rice is actually planted into already flooded fields, and we use airplanes. Oh. We, uh, we take our rice seed, which is uh, the seed uh, They here. took it all from us. That, nope, oh, here we go. Some. We've got some. So yep. this, the same rice that we are going to mill to eat is actually rice seed. We take the seed in the spring and we soak it in water. That makes the seed very heavy, but it also starts the seed growing. We drain the seed then, it only, we only soak it for 24 hours, and then we drain it and we put the seed then in airplanes. And the airplanes fly the seed onto flooded fields. And the seed already starting to sprout lands in the water, sinks to the soil, and starts to grow, puts its root into the soil, and pushes a leaf up through the water, and it's on its way. Is there any way that I can ride on one of those? You know, I think I know someone. You think you know so someone? I, I think I can get you on one. I know somebody with the last name of Lumberg. Yeah. <laughs> So we're coming out of the fields. The harvesters have cut the rice and have loaded the rice into the trucks. The, the trucks come in and the trailers will dump the rice into what we call pits. So the rice is dumped into the pit and taken into the bins. Then from the bins, we move the rice into the rice dryer. The dryer is where we take the moisture out of the rice. So we have to dry the rice down because we're harvesting it in the field at, at a higher moisture or, or more wet then we want to store the rice in the dryer bins. Because these the rice may have to stay in these bins up to a year until we're ready to mill it. And if it's too wet, it can actually get moldy or it could create hot spots and you know like little fires and, and damage the rice. Oh wow. Yeah that'd be really bad. That <laughs> really bad. So so when we bring the rice in and it goes in the bins, we have to dry it down. 
We so take that's it, the first step after it comes out of the field. That's the first step. We have to dry it down. Okay. And that could take four weeks. That could take a month or even longer than a month because we can only take out about a percentage of moisture at a time when we take the rice and put it through a dryer. The dryer, I know you're probably thinking, you know, like a hair dryer. It kind of is like a hair dryer, oh, but it's okay. really big. Yeah. Uh, we take the rice out and we lift it up an elevator. So it's, it's like, a, well, it is like an elevator. So yeah. It's little cups that take the grain up to the top of the elevator and then we drop it down through uh, a column that has air, hot air, uh, blowing through the column. Oh, wow. That hot air removes the moisture from the grain. And like I said, it's only about a percentage of moisture at a time, so little bits at a time, so that we can keep the grain from breaking or cracking. The grain then goes back into the bins and rests for about a day, and then we can take it back through the dryer. Oh, wow. How many times will it go through the dryer? Well, a per, about a percentage of moisture at a time, so it could go through the dryer 10, 15 times. Wow. And how many silos do you have here? Oh boy, I think we've got about 75 silos, but that's because we grow many different Yay! varieties of rice. So what are some different types of rice? Okay, uh, short grain, medium grain, long grain. Then we have the aromatics, like the basmati and the jasmine. And we grow California varieties of basmati and jasmine. We have Italian varieties like the Arborio, the Baldo, the Carnaroli, the Violoni Nano, Japanese sushi rice, Japanese sweet rice. I, I thought there was brown and white. You mean there's more? Oh, well, those are all in brown and white too. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> there are many different types of rice. Many different types of rice. So what's being loaded in these trucks right now? So the rice that's being loaded in the trucks is what we call paddy rice. So it's the rice that's come from the fields or the paddy. Mm -hmm. It's been dried down and now it's ready to go to the mill to have the hull taken off the outside of the kernel so that we can either sell it ready to eat or we can make other products out of it. So this is rice that is still in the hull. Two little leaves on the outside of the kernel that protect it, but we have to take those off for us to be able to eat it and that's the milling process. When was the last time you had rice? Last week, we had we had orange chicken with white with white rice a month ago, and I had it with steak yesterday. Yesterday, maybe in September, maybe like a few weeks ago. What'd you eat with it? Um, chicken. Yesterday night in a burrito. This is incredible because we're up on one of the smaller silos, right? Yep. These, these hold about a million pounds of rice. <laughs> what do the big silos hold? They hold about three. Three million? Yeah. Oh my goodness. And when you walk up, you can feel like this breeze coming out of here. Mm -hmm. So it's drying the rice right now? Yes, these, these types of bins uh, actually have false floors in them, which means that we can push air underneath the bin and blow the air up through the rice to dry the rice. Wow, and is it half full or how full is it? Oh no, this, this looks like it's only about maybe a quarter wow. full. So it's got a lot of ways to go until it's full. See, my, my hair's not moving much, but if, if you look oh, in I there, okay. let's see how much, <laughs> <laughs> how much it's actually blowing in there. Yeah. And it's blowing that, that, see that really strong earthy smell again. Oh, it's wonderful. It's that grainy smell grainy. of the rice. Yeah. Yep. Well, it smells great. It's hard to see inside. You really yeah. can't. It's really dark. Really dark inside, but yeah. uh, wow. And you can fill this all the way to the to the top? Pretty much. Yep, just about to the top. And this boom that's behind us, you can either move it over this silo or that one or that one or that one. Right, so when the trucks are coming in, we can unload, but then this is this is uh, that elevator that can move the rice up and into this bin. Wow. And again, these are the small ones. If you just look over there, there's the big ones. Three million pounds of rice? Yep. Wow. Per silo. Per silo. Unbelievable. All right, let's get down. I'm getting scared. Right. <laughs> fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Rice is the most widely consumed staple food for most of the world's human population. Jessica, first question. I love your hat. You love it. <laughs> I love your doctor's outfit. What are we yeah, doing with these you. things on? Well, you know, we're wearing these smocks because we're about to go into a food facility. So. This is for food safety. We want to make sure that, uh, that we don't have anything on our clothes uh, that could fall into the product. So this is to help keep the food safe for the people who are going to eat it. Okay. I mean, literally, we just got away from the dryers and the silos. The truck bought over here. It's emptying out in front of us here. Yep. And you had us grab one of these handfuls. And so this is what rice looks like with the hull on it? Yep. This is patty rice. So it has the hull or the, hu or the husk on it. And when it goes into the mill, 
uh, the rice will be cleaned and then the husk will be taken off of it. When the husk is taken off, then what you have left is brown rice. It's ready to eat. If we mill it additionally, so if we take the bran layer off, then you have white rice. But it's, it's just a very simple process of, uh, I think you did, yep, there I, you go. Oh, there you just did it. Man, I lost so it. So it's, it's using your, if you use your fingers, uh -huh. you're, gonna, you're gonna do just what's happening in the mill, is you use the friction to take the husk off of the outside of the grain. And then you have left the husk, which is like two little leaves, and the grain which is the brown rice. And so all of these holes are going to be pulled off of the rice. Yep, the holes will be removed so that then we are left with brown rice and we can eat the kernels. And we need the kernel. Okay, I did it. This whole time I've been trying to do one. Boom, I got it. It's That's very it. small. It's very small. And can I eat, eat it? Oh, absolutely. It's ready to eat. This is brown rice. The brown rice. Uh-huh. It's a little hard. It's a little hard. It's a little hard. Okay. It's crunchy, like nuts. It's, like, it's crunchy, yeah. Wow. So when you eat rice in the house, you typically um, uh, cook it basically. Right. How long would it take to cook this brown rice to make it really nice and soft? Uh, cooking brown rice takes about 45 to 50 minutes. And just in water and just heat? In, just in water and heat. Yep. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's actually, it takes longer to cook brown rice than white rice because of the bran layer that's on it. But the bran layer has a lot of the nutrition. It's like eating an apple with the skin on versus peeling an apple. How often do you eat rice? A lot. <laughs> well, at times few days a week. Four times a week? Almost every day. A little often, usually at dinner. Not too often, but so, well, maybe in the middle. Once a month, maybe. Three times, two months. What am I holding in my hand? You are holding a rubber roller. So do you remember what we were doing outside with our fingers where we were rubbing the kernels and taking the hoe off? Yeah, my fingers hurt right now. Yeah, well, that's why we don't want to do it all with our fingers. So uh, we have these rubber rollers, there's two of them that are rolling together and the rice goes between the rollers and creates that friction to take the hoe off. So how long would this last? Uh, these are going to last probably a few days, so maybe three or four days. And will it go down? Oh yeah, it's going to rub the, uh, you know the hoe is really rough. Yeah. So the hoe will, will rub the rubber right off of it. And that's oh, wow. why we have to replace these pretty often. Wow. Yeah. So once the hole is off, then what? Okay, so then the kernel uh, is going to go onto a gravity table. So the rice coming out of that de-huller goes to a gravity table that is on an angle and is vibrating. The rice runs down the table with the vibrations, and what it's doing is it's separating the kernels out by specific gravity. What that means is a kernel that's still in the hole has a different specific gravity than a kernel that has the hole removed or than a broken kernel. So as the wow. kernel vibrates down the table, it actually shifts to different places on the table. So by the time it gets to the end and falls off the table, it's gonna fall into a pipe that takes it to the next place. But because it's all shaken into its different parts, right, a whole kernel, a broken kernel, or a kernel still in the hull, we can then take each of those different kinds of kernels to a different piece of equipment. When I look inside this shaker, I see many different levels. Yes. So yes. it's filling up each level? Right, each level is doing the job of the gravity, sep or the gravity separator because we have a lot of rice that we have to move through, so we can't just do it on one table. Each one of those is gonna have 10 or 12 tables that are doing the same job all at one time. And you have several shakers in this room. Oh, I think there's like six shakers. Yeah, because there's a lot of rice that has to move through. Wow. Yeah. After it's separated out from the gravity shaker, the gravity table, yep. then where's it going? The white rice goes to the whitener and then to an indent machine. That's that the cylinder that you saw turning. That's to take off any broken kernels. Because remember, anytime you're creating friction, you're creating heat and you can break kernels. So we want to make sure we take the broken out of the white rice before it also goes to the color sorter. And then what in the world is this vibrating floor all about? <laughs> well, we have all of our equipment up on a second floor because the, most of our equipment, uh, the rice is falling through the equipment using gravity. So that means that that equipment moving is just going to create some vibrations. Once it's been separated, mm -hmm. it looks like color separated, weight separated, broken or, or yeah, hole broken separated. separated. What happens to all the broken pieces or the, the problematic pieces of rice? You know, that's a really good question because we know what happens to the whole kernels. They go into a package or they go to be used for other products. The broken kernels are separated out 
and we can grind those into flour to make other products. Oh, okay. The, uh, but it, a damaged kernel can go for animal feed, and then the holes that were removed right at the very beginning, those can be used for animal bedding, uh, and they can even be used, a small amount of them are used in a fruit juice pressing process, where you mix the holes with fruit, and you use that as an inert in the pressing process to get the juice out. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Did you know that there are over 40,000 varieties of rice? So what's happening in this room? So we're doing the packaging process in this room. The rice has been milled and it's gonna go out as either a one pound, two pound, four pound, 12 pound or 25 pound bag. Whoa. To be packaged into whatever size package that we need using the equipment that's behind us. And in fact, we can even do 2,000 pound totes and those totes don't go to consumers. Those are going to go for uh, an industrial customer or we use them in-house to make other products like rice cakes or our box items. Right now, what's being packaged? Uh, right now, we have a blend that's called Jubilee Blend and then we also have a blend called Wild Blend. So we're doing both a one pound and a two pound package in here today. And then I, I also saw they're doing some 25 pound bags over on the other line. So where are we now? It's cold in here, first of all. It is cold in here. Yes, this, well, this is our cold room. It's where we keep uh, <laughs> yeah. our rice and our spices that are staged, getting ready to make other products from them. So the rice that was milled, that we went through the mill and we saw the milling process, that rice is brought over here and it's ready to go to make into other products. Uh, when it goes into rice cakes, uh, it's going to be taken and put into uh, of this vat here where we can add water and hydrate the rice, so bring the moisture up and then we load it into the machines and add heat and pressure and the rice pops into rice cakes. Wait a minute, didn't we just spend upwards of a year taking the moisture out of the rice? We did. And now you're gonna put We're it right back in? We're gonna put it right back in. Yep. Why? Because that's what makes it cook. <laughs> uh, okay. Just like when you're at home yeah. and you take rice that you bought from the store and you add water to it, we're cooking it. We're chemically changing it so that it makes it uh, uh, easier for us to chew and digest and it makes it taste good and we can add other flavors to it. So what type of rice cakes are you making today? Well, today we're making organic kettle corn rice cakes. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Is that what I'm smelling? That is what you're smelling. The entire town of Richvale is smelling <laughs> organic kettle corn rice cakes, which is really nice. Is that the only type of rice cake you make? No, we actually have 23 or 24 flavors of rice cakes. Oh my. Yeah. Are we going to actually see the rice cakes being popped? We are. Okay, where's that at? That's being done in the popping room. Right, let's go. <laughs> Couple observations. First of all, it got warm in this room. It did. And it yep. smells so good in this room. <laughs> and I can't believe how many machines I'm looking at. Yeah, there's quite a few. Wow. I think there's around 80 machines. But the, the reason it got hot is because we're using heat and pressure to cause the rice to pop. So it's going to bring the temperature up because each one of these machines is generating heat. The, the rice that we talked about that's now been uh, had water added to it, so it's hydrated, is loaded into the machine hoppers, and the rice is feeding in between two metal plates, and the metal plates are going to add pressure and heat, and then allow that rice to expand into the shape of the rice cake. Wow, yeah. it seems like it's happening pretty fast. It does happen pretty fast. Like a, about, boy, probably about 10 to 12 seconds, and, and one rice cake is formed one at a time. So you're saying they're just adding the rice up in this and it's going down? Yep. I'm hearing pop. Well, like that, I'm hearing a pop. Why is it popping? <laughs> Why is it popping? Yeah. Because, because the rice kernel itself is expanding. It's, it's bursting. It's exploding oh. and popping into the shape of the rice cake. Wow. Okay. Most people have pop, popcorn at home. Well, popping rice is similar, but it's a little different. The difference is when you go to pop popcorn, you probably, you know, you put it on the stove, you're adding heat to it, but each one of those popcorn kernels has a hole on the outside of it. And that hole is a, a, a tough little outside coating that's adding pressure to the inside of the kernel. So as that popcorn kernel heats up, the hole is pushing on, on the inside, it's trying to expand. <laughs> And so a popcorn kernel will then explode like, like that, that, right? <laughs> and break open the hull. Well, the rice kernel doesn't have that off. outside hull because that we took it off in the milling process. So the metal plates of the machine have to add that pressure and to allow the kernel to expand with the heat. And explode like it and just explode did. And explode like it just did. Yep. Wow. Same thing like a popcorn kernel. Oh, that is crazy. Okay. So after it's done creating it. Is it done at this point? Are we going to add flavor to these? Yep. 
Yep, these are organic kettle corn. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Asia alone produces and consumes over 90% of the world's rice. I cannot believe how many rice cakes are making their way on this line. Yeah. It's almost a million cakes a day are made. Whoa! And they're like piling up right here. They are. That's why, that's why we have these bars to separate them out because we want them in a single layer going through to get the flavoring so every cake is evenly flavored. They're hot. They're warm. They're really really warm. warm right here. Yep. So it's going into this thing. Yep. It's like it's going to go into it. Uh, it goes on the vibratory table again to make sure we have a single layer, so only one, so only one cake is going through, and not stacked up on each other. And then it's going to get its flavoring applied as a spray in the spray tunnel. Yep. Is this heating it up right here? Uh, no, it's not heating it up. It's just applying the spray. Oh, it's just applying the yep, spray. Just applying the spray. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going on the other yep. side. Oh, I see a curtain of something. What is that? What is yeah, that? So that's your that's your topical application. And then it's coming here. Now they're bunching up again. Yep. Look at the bunching up. Oh my goodness. So now they're going into the oven. They're they're all sticky and they have their flavoring and they have their organic salt and sugar. They're going to go into the tunnel and be dried back down because they can't be sticky when we put them into the package. They have to be ready to go into a package and go to a store shelf. We're on the back side of the oven now, right? Yeah, I can feel it. Can you feel it? It is so warm yeah. right here. <laughs> oh my goodness. And look at they're just piling out. Yeah, they've all been toasted and dried down and they're ready to go into the next room for packaging. And is this where you do the quality control? This is where you can do the quality control. Oh, I love it. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna look for, oh, there's a half one coming off right there. I'm gonna go, boom. Oh. Half it, look at that. That's a good one. I'm glad you caught that one. Wow, it is hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a little hot. Wow. All right, so let me, uh... That's pretty good. Huh? I love kettle. Yeah. I love kettle. Oh my goodness. What a fantastic day. I want to thank Jessica and everyone out here at Lundberg for teaching us all about rice. And I especially want to thank you, Henry, for sending us on today's Curiosity Quest. Now, if there's something you want to know more about, let me hear from you. Go to curiositychquest.org, click on the Send Us on a Quest link, and simply tell me what you're curious about. And who knows, it could be you that sends us on our next quest. Now remember, every great adventure begins with just one person's curiosity. So I wonder, what are you curious about? I'm Joel Green, I'll see you next time.